What's going on guys? We are back. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, whatever time of day it is where you are. We are starting a new series here. This is kind of going to be the kind of how-to masterclass series. We're going to look at upgrading your workouts. So we're going to start off with the big one and that is chest training. So we're gonna be looking at your chest sessions. So we're gonna be looking at how we can improve and get the most out of your chest workouts. Okay, so first things first, before we get on to lifting any weight, we're gonna be going through our warm up. So warm ups are often overlooked or neglected by a lot of us. I'm guilty of that myself, but they are super important, not only for improving our workouts, but also decreasing the risk of injury. So three things to consider when we're going for a warm up is trying to increase range of motion, increase blood flow, and also act activation of the target muscles. So although we're training pectorals today, we need to consider all the muscles and joints that are involved in these movements. So obviously the main joints involved are shoulders and elbows, but then we have to consider warming up the pectorals as well as the muscles of the upper back and arms. Up first is shoulder dislocates. So not as bad as it sounds, we're trying to increase range of motion and blood flow at the shoulders. So obviously the shoulder is gonna be super important for chest training. You can use a band, you can use a dowel, or you can just do it free weight with just your hands. We're gonna start nice big around the shoulder joint as wide range of motion as you can really opening up those shoulders so really true you should do this as often as possible probably before and after every upper body workout nice and slow so you can even concentrate a little bit more on one side at a time okay so we tend not to do static stretching when we warm up so static stretching can actually decrease your strength or power output in your training session so if you are going to static stretch Try and keep it to after your workouts or even on separate days. So one of the exercises I recommend is a face ball. So this is great for warming up the upper back and the shoulders. So we're gonna get some external rotation in there. So this is all gonna increase the safety of your shoulder. So we're warming up the rotator cuffs, upper back, traps, rhomboids, rear delts. So we're pulling nice and high with some external rotation at the elbow. If you don't have a band, you can use a cable machine or you can even do it bent over with some dumbbells. So this can also be coupled with some band pull aparts, which is similar movement. It's gonna warm up the upper back and the shoulders. Okay, so as we mentioned with warming up the shoulders, one of the really important, or not just one, but the muscles that are really important in keeping your shoulders nice and healthy are the rotator cuffs. So obviously they're responsible for internal and external rotation of the shoulder. And it's good to see actually these days, people are actually looking at trying to warm up their rotator cuffs. They're just going about it a little bit wrong. Often you'll see people doing this exercise with all the good intentions at heart, but unfortunately, this doesn't do anything for your rotator cuffs. This is basically an isometric bicep curl because gravity works going down, so the weight is pushing my arm down. There's no resistance externally or internally against my rotator cuff. So, we need to look at improving that because we do really want to warm up and strengthen those rotator cuffs. So a few different ways you can do that. You can use a band, you can use a cable, you can actually use a dumbbell. So we'll show you a correct way to do it with the dumbbell. We're gonna start with a band. As long as you anchor it at some point, whether it's onto a machine, we wanna try and keep our elbow nice and tucked, and then we're gonna rotate away from the body. Often one of the reasons people get shoulder pain is due to shoulder impingement because we focus a lot on all this pressing, so we get super internally rotated, this kyphotic posture that we often see, and we're not doing anything to open up the shoulder, so we get this impingement in the front of the shoulder, which is super common. So strengthening up the rotator cuffs, not just warming them up, but also strengthening them, is gonna help prevent that. Okay, so if you don't have a band or a cable machine handy, you can still do it with a dumbbell. This is just, just slightly different. So we're gonna use a bench, Foot comes on the bench and we're gonna place our elbow on top of our knee. Obviously weight goes in the hand and then what we wanna do is let that hand fall inside, so internally rotate, make sure we keep the shoulder nice and still and then we're gonna externally rotate up to perpendicular from the floor. Nice and slow and up. So you don't wanna rush this and you also don't wanna to go too heavy, so start nice and light and then same as anything, progressive overload, get those rotator cuffs nice and strong. Okay, so now we're looking at increasing blood flow and activation of the pectoral muscles. Obviously, that's what we're gonna train, so we wanna get some blood in there, so we're nice and warm, ready to go. So nice and simply, I suggest press-ups. So press-ups are great because they allow your scapula to move while you press, whereas normally you're pinned to a bench and we want good scapular health. So now we are moving on to our weight training. So obviously this is a bulk session, the most important stuff. Today we're gonna to choose four chest exercises that I feel are probably the most important or most beneficial for strength and hypertrophy of pectoral muscles. 
We are gonna start with barbell bench press. Okay, so we're starting on incline bench, as you can see. So normally, you'll probably find that people start on flat bench. So today we're gonna to start on an incline, just because it can actually be a little bit better for obviously growing the upper pecs and just general chest recruitment. But there are a few things to consider when it comes to incline bench press. You may have seen a video go quite viral very recently of a guy incline bench pressing quite a substantial amount of weight and he has a little bit of an injury and his pet completely tears, which is pretty graphic. Uh, but there's a few reasons for that. Not to say that he doesn't know what he's doing or he's doing anything incorrect, but there's better ways to go around your bench pressing, particularly with the incline. Width of your grip is gonna be a super important factor. So obviously you can go wide or narrow. Generally, I advise people going just, just outside shoulder width, so what's called actually biochromial grip. The wider you go, the actual more stress you can put through your shoulder. So that could be potentially a reason why you see a lot of pet tears when it comes to barbell bench pressing is because they've got quite a wide grip. If you bring it in a little bit, you can actually then get more range of motion and give yourself a better opportunity to grow the pectoral muscles because obviously full range of motion is going to be a super important factor when it comes to growing the chest. So one factor you want to consider is the angle of which your upper arm is in line to your torso. So. In that video, you saw the guy tear his pec. His arms are all the way up here. They're super wide and they're fully abducted. So they're almost at 90 degrees from his body. So this is actually gonna take tension away from the upper pecs, which is what we're trying to target. You actually, when you're doing an incline, wanna bring your arms in a little bit, almost tucked into the body. So I generally suggest people to aim for about 45 degrees. So then that's where we'll bring a slightly narrower grip, bring the bar all the way down to chest, nice full range of motion and up. When you see if I keep my elbows flared up at 90 degrees, I've got a wide grip. It's almost kind of like what we call a guillotine press, which is actually all gonna be anterior delts, so the front of the shoulders. It actually takes tension away from the chest and puts a lot of stress on the shoulders. So bring those hands in a little bit, tuck those elbows, nice and low, full range of motion, big squeeze on the chest. With any exercise we focus on full range of motion, we want a nice, slow, controlled, eccentric, and then just full contraction. Okay, so I'm actually a big fan of dumbbells over barbells but one of the big benefits of using a barbell is obviously that we can put the pectorals under greater load so obviously one of the most important factors for growing muscle is tension and load so if we can put more weight on it we get more stimulus okay so exercise two probably my favorite chest exercise is going to be a flat dumbbell chest press okay so as i said we're on to our dumbbell press so again similar to obviously barbell press but the advantage of the dumbbells is particularly range of motion. One of the key factors of muscle growth is full range of motion. The benefit of the dumbbells is we can go from fully lengthened to fully shortened. So obviously with a barbell, we can't converge the elbows together, which is the role of the pectorals. We wanna bring the humerus across the body to the midline, which we really can do with the dumbbells. We can also load it up nice and heavy. So again, a few things to consider is the angle of the humerus at the shoulder. Similar to how we talked about with the incline, but maybe a little bit less important now because we're on a flat. We're trying to line up pectoral fibers. We don't want to press too high. Keep that, el that angle, elbows slightly tucked. Probably don't need to tuck them as much as you would on an incline. Anywhere around here, press together. Keep that tension on the pecs, not the anterior deltoids. Okay, so now we are moving on to a chest press machine. So, we've done the incline bench, we've done flat dumbbell, we're now gonna do a slight decline on the chest press machine. We wanna think about training the pec through all of these angles, but I will say decline is not a necessity. This is just a very slight decline, but this is a good machine because the handles converge, which is one thing that you really wanna look for when you're choosing a chest press machine. Handles coming together means greater, mode of, greater range of motion, so full contraction for the pectoral muscles. The benefit of using a chest press machine is that we can really now load up the weight without having to worry so much about the stability issues that comes with dumbbells or barbells. Okay, so one thing we also wanna consider is not going to decline or to incline on any of our presses. The second that angle increases, we're gonna take tension away from the pectorals. So doing a huge decline with a barbell or dumbbell isn't gonna be amazing for pec recruitment. You'd be better off doing some dips or just a smaller decline. Same with incline. The higher on the incline you go, the more delts you're gonna get. Okay, so exercise four, last but not least, we are moving on to some flies. 
So there's a few advantages of the flyers. Obviously, it's the only isolation exercise that we're doing with the chest today. All the other exercises were compounds. We're gonna really kind of wring out the rest of the pec, what's left in there. We're gonna to work to failure. So with the compounds, I genuinely suggest not going to failure, particularly at the start of your session. As we're near the end, we're gonna really push towards failure. A few things to obviously consider in the flies is we're focusing on that converging, bringing the elbows together without the use of the triceps. What you wanna try and avoid is also using the biceps. If you have too much flexion at the elbow, you can become a bit of a crab and you're gonna get some bicep recruitment. Okay, so the benefit of now using these cables is that we're gonna do it standing, which also allows our scapula to move. So again, we're keeping the shoulders really healthy and getting full range of motion. This machine here is great because we have a backrest, which is gonna keep us nice and stable, so not using any momentum and put more load through the chest, but it also allows my scapula to move because it's not pinning my shoulder blades in place. So obviously you can play about a little bit on the angles with this one. We're actually doing a decline. I prefer generally my flies doing a slight decline just so we can really match those pectoral fibers and get a nice full range of motion, big stretch back, bring those elbows together. Okay, so there you have it. That concludes our upgrading your chest session workout. So obviously I've given you four exercises there. There's a plethora of other exercises, but generally speaking, I think these are gonna be the best for upgrading your session, getting the most out of your chest training to really grow those pectoral muscles. So depending on whether you train chest once or twice or even three times a week, that's gonna affect the volume, sets and reps that you use. Generally speaking, probably wanna train chest twice a week with between nine to 16 sets for chest per session. Obviously it's gonna affect whether you're training other muscle groups in that session, but those are good markers to aim for. What I genuinely advise in terms of reps is starting heavier at the beginning of the session and as you go through the session, increasing the reps. So maybe first exercise, you wanna go between six and eight, then eight to 10, 10 to 12, and then finishing maybe on towards failure with 16 and above repetitions. So here I've given you an example of a way you could configure those four exercises into a session for you across a week. Okay, so thanks for watching guys as always. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed that video. Hit us up in the comments with any feedback that you have, what you wanna see next. That is our first of the upgrade series. Next up, we're gonna hit you with the back session, so how to improve your back training. Thanks for watching, see you next time.